Hello and welcome back to the home of Cinch YouTube, Rockingham, where today we've got an Arbath 500E. Yes, this is the electric one and we want to find out a couple of things. We want to find out, is it faster around our track than the Turbo 1.4 that we timed earlier in the year? And secondly, is it more fun to drive on the asphalt? Oh, and you know what? We might as well investigate how long the battery lasts when you drive it quickly on track as well. So let's get to it. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And when you're shopping for your next car, we have lots of hot hatches on Cinch. All right, yes, this is an Arbard 500E. That cost, with the yellow paint specs on it, £38,795. So before you all jump to the comments and say, oh, you can get an MG4X power for less and it's got more power. Yeah, I know, and I agree. And we will be timing one of those at our track very soon. But it doesn't matter in the world of Arbath because these things have always been true when it comes to Arbath hatchbacks, certainly since the 500 and the 595 were on sale, because as we know, they were always more expensive than their size and performance would suggest. You could get a Fiesta ST, for example, with more power, more performance, and better handling, to be frank. But the Arbath recipe has always been about fun. And I don't think anyone can deny that this thing here does look a little bit like it's been crafted specifically to be fun. Now let's cover off the specs really quickly. We know it's got a 42.2 kilowatt hour battery, and that gives it about 157 miles of range. That's, what, 40 less than you get in the 500E, but of course you get more power in this. In fact, you get quite a bit more. You get 152 horsepower, 235 newton meters of torque, and it will crack the 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint in about seven seconds. And they also say it will hit 31 mile an hour in 2.9 seconds. So off the light stuff, should be pretty fun. But what was really interesting when we saw this car earlier this year in a static setting, was that Arbath claimed this thing was quicker around the track, around its test track in Italy, than the petrol one. And I thought, that sounds a bit wild, which is why we're here today to see if it's quicker. Now we're gonna give it a fighting chance. It's drizzling outside at the moment. The track is very greasy, but it's due to dry up shortly. But let me talk you through whether this thing is fun to drive. Now I've got it straight in track mode, Scorpion track mode, obviously. You'll probably hear, or not hear, that the exhaust is not on at the moment. The fake exhaust sound is not on. And I will turn it on, should we do it now? Annoyingly though, there is a really fiddly system to do it. In fact, you have to come to a complete stop. Where's the fun in that? I wanna press the button to turn on the exhaust when I'm driving past a group of people and I wanna say, look at me, if they hadn't already noticed me in the bright yellow car. So to turn the exhaust on, you have to go to vehicle setup, display, and then you have to go down to electric features. How unintuitive is that? Electric features, and then that's your electric sound on and off button there. Hidden away, not convenient. Oh, <laughs> wheel spin, and it makes noises in tandem. But, oh, here's one thing I've noticed straight away. We don't have any gears in this car. The petrol car has five gears, so you get a bit of a power, revs drop, power, revs drop. This thing is just, well, listen. Just meh. It doesn't actually sound that bad and it's quite loud outside, which makes it especially fun, if not especially silly. But yeah, I don't know how much fun you're really gonna have with this kind of sound. I guess it sounds like a go-kart, you might say, a go-kart with a sort of a weird tone. Enough of that though, let's talk about the handling. Now, I've got the systems on still, I've still got stability on, good turning, good grip on the front. The car does feel like it's rolling a little bit, but that was also true for the non-higher performance versions of the 500 petrol car, the 595. But then actually it feels quite stiff over the curbs, which is good, because it means it kind of just settles over them quite quickly. It just sort of hips over them. Oh my God. Do you know what though? The curbs are not slippery with this torque. 235 Newton meters, but that's obviously delivered immediately on a very flat way as well. Not like you would have in the petrol car. So as soon as I put a wheel on the wet curb, you really do feel it, well, struggle to put the power down. There again, let's turn off the systems because that's the same thing to do when I've just been talking about how little grip there is out here. Right, ESC off. Does it slide around? Here we go. Put your foot down, come off the power, turn in. Oh, and it does a bit of, actually it felt a lot more stable. It does do lift off oversteer, but there's quite a bit of roll. Brake, turn. Yeah, definitely wants to point its way in, but I can still feel something pinching a brake at a rear, trying to stop me from sliding. Decent traction. This is a really slippy corner in these conditions and it put the power down remarkably well. Pretty quick down the straight. 
not rapid, not surprising. Turns in lovely, four-wheel drift on the power, traction's good. All the basics are there for this to actually be quite an enjoyable car to drive. I imagine when it's dried out a bit later, when we do our time, that's gonna be really, really effective. And actually, Arbath's promise of this thing being quicker than a petrol car doesn't feel that impossible. Steering feel is, well, there isn't any, but I can feel the vibrations of the tire through the floor of the car. That's something I've noticed in a few models of late. If you turn the car in, I'm getting a bit of vibration through the steering wheel, but actually there are more messages through the floor of the car and therefore through my feet, weirdly, telling me that the fronts are starting to scrub. Also, I can hear it as well. Linear acceleration, and let's try the brakes. Brakes are strong, yeah, they're pretty good. Doesn't tear your face off, but it's pretty good. I mean, certainly comparable with that petrol car. What about the range usage? Well, we currently have 99 miles of range left in the car, 99 miles with 80%. So it shows you when you're using it, you really do drop away. So we're gonna cross the line. We're currently still reading 99 miles at dead on 80% and we cross the line. Let's see what we do. We've lost a mile already. So let's call it 98 miles, 80%. Turn it in, back on the power, full power. All right, so now we're crossing the line and we've got 76% and 91 miles of battery range. We use seven miles of range and what was that? 4% of battery on a, what, 1.5 mile track? So yeah, that is the number on the screen right now, laps available for your charge. But of course, firstly, it's unlikely many Arbath 500Es are gonna be driven on track as much as they're marketed for that and as much as Arbath set a time, let's be frank, most Arbaths, most of the petrol ones, spend their lives in cities or doing motorway miles as well, just being fun little things that are easy to drive. And this definitely feels capable of all of those things. All right, well, all the basics are there. It's definitely fun. <laughs> definitely fun. And it definitely wants to slide and move around a little bit within what the electronics allow you to do, even with the systems turned off. And do you know what? I'm actually comfortable in it. The old one, I felt too tall and high up in it and I want to go lower in this one, but I'm much more comfortable in this interior. It's a really nice place to be now. Oh, that front end's good. I think this car is going to be an excellent car to live with on the road, but is it faster than the petrol one on track? Let's find out. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we clocked to 130.25, but I'm gonna do something we haven't done before and knock off just over three tenths from this car's time because as the footage now will be showing you, I was actually on for a bit of a quicker lap, but then the battery was too low and it cut my power. So let's give it the benefit of the doubt and say it did a 129.89, which uh, still leaves it bottom of our leaderboard. Oh dear. And also 1.8 seconds slower than the petrol car. Now today the weather has been mixed, so it was potentially a few tenths quicker but I think ultimately what we can see is that this slightly less powerful and much heavier electric hatchback is slower 
than the petrol version. No major surprises there. I think Arbath, when they quoted a quicker time, must have been talking about comparing this one to the slower performance Arbath 500. I don't know. Either way, it was good fun on track, but certainly its home is in the city. It adjusts under power a little bit. There's a bit of playfulness with lift off oversteer, but it's minimal. Really, this thing just grips and puts its power down pretty smoothly. I don't doubt the statistics. I don't doubt the 0.62 mile hour claim, but yeah, I think it deserves to live in a city and really the racetrack is for the petrol model. No surprises there then. But anyway, let us know what you think of this car in the comments below. Firstly, do you like its exhaust? And secondly, would you buy one of these over the petrol one, especially if you live in a city? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you soon.